Captain America. Who could be more thematically appropriate to talk about for Independence Day? Of course it's going to be Captain America. I got on my Three Wolf uh, USA shirt. We've got a Budweiser koozie with a Mountain Dew in it. I mean, we are ready to celebrate our independence. I mean, he's pure patriotic propaganda, and I don't mean that as a bad thing at all. Consider the character's origins. It's 1941, a full year before the U.S. gets involved in World War II, and his creators are two Jewish guys. Writer Joe Simon, artist Jack Kirby, of course they want the U.S. to get involved, so they create a character. And it's pure propaganda in the best possible way. The early 1940s Captain America comics are kind of hilarious because they're slightly dated, but they have some fantastic tropes, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Here's my plan. I can think of about 10 tropes that you could find in the older Captain America comics from the 1940s. If we see four or less, I will watch and review the 1990 Captain America movie. It's terrible. Steve! Mr. President, thanks. If we see five or more, I'll set off a ton of fireworks. Either way, we'll all have some fun. Here's some of the tropes you could count on finding in an average issue of 1940s Captain America. Cap and Bucky wear a disguise. Bucky saves the day. Racist caricatures. Being punished or yelled at by their sergeant. Cap kills someone. Axis enemy on American soil prior to World War II. A caption explaining what we can already see is happening in the panel. A damsel in distress. Cap smokes a pipe. U.S. traitors. Now, there are reprints of those Captain America comics out there, but of course the originals are just far out of my price range. So, finding an issue in a comic book store isn't that easy, but I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to take advantage of the Marvel Unlimited app. There are thousands of comics for me to go through. I pay $100 a year, and you get unlimited access to all of Marvel's digital library. That includes new issues every Wednesday. They're about six months behind what hits the stands. And they have an amazing backlog of older issues, just tons of them. So I think it's a pretty good deal, and they've got all the original Captain America comics. When you subscribe to Marvel Unlimited for a year, they send you this annual box of stuff. I just got mine, that's why I thought of using it for this week. And I thought we'd do a quick unboxing to see what you get with this year's Marvel Unlimited subscription. Okay, so... First, you get this nice little letter with a card, and that's got my name and says how long I've been a, a member. We've got some exclusive comics. We've got an issue of Invincible Iron Man, Captain America, Agent Carter. All right, so three, three comics. So that's kind of cool. Three physical comics with uh, exclusive covers for Marvel Unlimited. Uh, I see the little logo there and uh, just sort of gets you up to speed if you're a new reader. Oh, all right, let's see here. Well, the most obvious is this action figure. And that's Rescue, uh, or Pepper Potts. You may know her in the Marvel movies. Pepper Potts gets a suit of Iron Man armor. So they gave me a, a Marvel Legends exclusive figure. I'll, I don't really collect these, so I'll probably give this to one of my friends that does collect it. And then it looks like I've got uh, two pins here, two buttons. One is for the Strategic Science Reserve. That's the scientific group that starts Cap the Captain America experiment in the first Captain America movie. Peggy Carter is a member. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. is what they eventually become. You've probably heard of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. 
Not bad. So I decided to download Captain America Comics number three from 1941. Let's see how many tropes we can find. Our story begins with a Hollywood studio determined to make an anti-Nazi picture despite the bad publicity it may earn them abroad. However, the producer of the movie is quickly murdered by a hunchback. The hunchback kills the producer and begins climbing down the wall and we have our first trope because the narration caption tells us exactly what we can see, that the hunchback is climbing down the wall. Ah, but here's our second trope. Right in the very next panel, we've got Captain America smoking a pipe. That was just something he did at that time. I guess it was to make him look a little smarter, maybe? Does smoking a pipe make you look smarter? Captain America and Bucky are reading the newspaper. Turns out that the movie is actually being filmed near their camp. So they and a bunch of other soldiers decide to get roles as extras in the movie. Captain America and Bucky, of course, are using it as cover to investigate this murder. And on the very next page, yet another trope. This is number three. Captain America is wearing a disguise. It's something he did a lot back in these days. He wasn't always running around in his Captain America uniform. He would frequently have to dress up in all sorts of manners of disguises, or Bucky would, to investigate the crimes that they were uh, looking into. But in this, he's got a pretty good reason. Captain America is dressed up as a knight for the movie. It's a medieval picture, kind of like Robin Hood. And the starlet is showing a little bit of extra interest in Captain America. Who wouldn't? He's dreamy. But as the movie begins filming its first scene, a joust between two riders, one of the actors is shot by an arrow. Captain America and Bucky switch into their superhero uniforms and chase down the archer, but just as the archer is about to explain what's going on, someone throws a javelin into his back. This is pretty violent stuff. Captain America and Bucky lose sight of the hunchback, but main actor Craig Talbot steps in and says he saw the hunchback run into Goris Barloff's dressing room. Maybe it was a lot funnier in 1941. This is a lot like a Scooby-Doo type mystery. The police show up and are about to arrest Goris Barloff, but the director steps in and actually punches the cop in the face to keep him from arresting his main actor because he says it's going to be the best picture he's ever filmed. Somehow I kind of doubt that. The Hunchback breaks into the Starlet's trailer and kidnaps her, so we have our fourth trope. We're getting close. All right, we're almost at the end of the story, but this is a damsel in distress type moment. She's just shrieking up a storm. The Hunchback climbs onto the top of a castle, and Bucky and Cap are trying to figure out how to get up there, so <laughs> Captain America decides that he should be catapulted up there. Captain America climbs into the castle, bumps into Craig Talbot, the actor, asks what he's doing there, but Talbot says he just came in to look for the hunchback as well. Pretty suspicious, huh? But Captain America instantly turns behind him and sees that Talbot is carrying a wig and a hunchback costume that he stole from Goris Barloff. Talbot is the killer. He's jealous. He, he's jealous, apparently, that Captain America was catching the eye of the starlet. So they have a fight, but Captain America obviously wins and holds him for the police. I guess that's the story. So it looks like four tropes, and here we are on our final panel with the, the policeman arresting Craig Talbot. Oh! I think that this final panel, the final panel on the final page, does count for a trope because they're getting yelled at by Sergeant Duffy. Almost all of their adventures in these books end with Sergeant Duffy yelling at Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes, Hey, why were you off base? You were missing. And of course, they were really solving a crime as superheroes. But in the story, I guess it's a, it's a secret identity type situation. That's five tropes. That means it's time to go buy some fireworks. America! So I'm here at a really cool Indian reservation called Ill Eagle Fireworks. We're going to be able to find some really dope fireworks here. I'm so excited. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. If he's led to a fight, then a duel is due, then the red and the white and the blue will come through when Captain America throws his mighty shield. All right, let's do some fireworks.
that was fun. That was that was pretty cool. Got some good fireworks. Um, these original issues by Simon and Kirby were really cool. The artwork doesn't quite look exactly like what you're used to from Kirby, but you have to consider two things. One, it was about 25 years before he started working on books like Fantastic Four, Hulk, Thor, X-Men. Second, sometimes he wasn't doing all of the artwork. Uh, Joe Simon would sometimes do some of the penciling. He had two guys that would ink him. So all these people would like trade back and forth on the penciling and inking duties, creating a sort of generic style that, that was a mesh of everybody's. This version of Captain America is a lot different. He has a secret identity. He's sneaking off to fight the Axis powers over in Europe. It's a lot more grounded, actually, in some ways. Um, a little less sci-fi stuff, a little more horror stuff. It was just a product of what comics were in the 1940s. But it's still a hell of a lot of fun. I definitely recommend checking some of them out. So please like and subscribe to my channel. You know, do whatever you want. Just consume. That's what you do. You consume. I create. Maybe you create.